Hey guys, Miss Marusik here, and in this video, we're going to do a review of metric conversions from pre AP chemistry. Now, there's lots of ways to remember metric conversions. I know some of you remember that there's a thousand um, meters in a kilometer or a kilometer, depending on where you're from. Um, you might remember that there's a hundred centigrams in a grams, and those are great conversions. If you like memorizing them that way, then by all means. But I find it way easier and just way more consistent to memorize what are called scientific notation equivalents. Now, you notice here I only put some metric conversions, like kilo, centi, milli, micro, nano. That's clearly not all of the metric prefixes that exist. Um, you've got ones bigger than kilo, like giga and mega, that we use when we talk about um, computer bytes. We also have smaller than nano, like for example, pico is smaller than nano. Um, but these are the ones that you see most often used in AP chemistry. And so these are the ones that you want to be familiar with. Um, but what I've given you here are what are called scientific notation equivalents for these um, metric prefixes. So I find these way easier to memorize than all of those other random conversions to use. And just so that way I can be consistent on how I'm doing these conversions, especially when it comes to these really small ones like micro and nano. Um, I don't want to be moving over the decimal nine times. That just sounds really annoying. And sometimes I need to show my work on what I'm doing in my conversions. And so it's important to have a consistent way of doing that. So when I'm using these scientific notation equivalents, uh, what happens is that the one, number one, always goes with the metric prefix when you're setting up your dimensional analysis conversion, whereas the scientific notation equivalent goes with the base unit. And what I mean by the base unit is whatever you would attach your prefix to. So like grams or joules or moles. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could attach a prefix to. Um, and you'll see a lot of them used throughout the year in AP chemistry. Um, so I've kind of shown you down here some different ways you can kind of think about these conversions. Um, again, I'm going to be using these um, metric uh, scientific notation equivalents because I feel like they're easier, but totally up to you how you want to do it as long as you're using valid conversions. I will tell you this, I love also using this statement right here when I do metric conversions. Um, whenever I go between a prefix and a base, that's going to take one dimensional analysis step, whereas conversions between two prefixes take two steps. So let's look at two examples of that. Um, so first off here, it asks on this question, what would 4.05 times 10 to the eighth microliters be in liters? Well, I see that micro has one of those prefixes on it, whereas liters doesn't. So that would be what we would consider our metric base unit here. So I know between a prefix and a base that that is going to take only one step on a dimensional analysis. Now I'm going to show you first how I set up my dimensional analysis um, when I'm when I'm doing these kinds of problems, but then I'm going to show you some other um, formats for it that you could potentially use. So I'm going to start off with my beginning number here. I have 4.05 times 10 to the eighth, and micro is that kind of weird looking M symbol up here. Um, when I write it, what I usually do is I it's kind of like I'm making a hook and then making the letter U. So there's my micro symbol. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how many liters would that be. So we already said that that's going to be one conversion step. So I'm going to set up my one step here. And again, I'm going to show you some other ways you could set up that one step here in a little bit. Since microliters is on top and I know I want that unit to cancel out, that means I need to put the unit of microliter down here on the bottom. And I'm going to be taking this into liters on top. So now when I'm trying to decide where these numbers go, one goes with the prefix. Say that to yourself over and over again. One goes with the prefix. Well, out of these, the thing that has the prefix is this micro. That's the prefix. So that's where my one goes. One microliter, okay? Then the scientific notation equivalent for micro goes with the base. Micro was one times 10 to the negative six. Now let's ask ourselves if that makes sense. One microliter, one tiny little thing, because we know micro is super small, is this fraction, a decimal, five zeros and a one, this small fraction of a big old liter. Well, 
that makes sense that one small thing is a fraction of a big thing. So that must mean I set up this conversion correctly. So always ask yourself, does my conversion make sense? Now there are some other ways to set this up. I like using this parentheses with the line because to me that looks like hey, I've got this math step here that I'm doing. It's very clear, like I could enter that in exactly how it looks into my calculator, which I'll show you here in a little bit. But I will show you two other ways that you could set this up. And depending on what resource you're looking at, might, they might be using one of these formats. Uh, first off, um, you'll see this really often on AP scoring guidelines. Um, rather than using parentheses, they'll just put times and then show their conversions. And then if they were adding another conversion, they put times and then put their next conversion after that. Um, your teacher might have also shown you this kind of almost like a T-chart railroad track kind of looking setup here um, where each conversion kind of goes in its own little T-chart step. Totally cool. Totally the same thing. Don't freak out. AP would accept any of these formats. So it's kind of like a take your pick on what you feel most comfortable with. It really doesn't matter which of these that you use. Um, I also want to talk about plugging this in your calculator because it's amazing how many people still mess up plugging all this into your calculator. So in order to enter in the scientific notation numbers, you would enter in your 4.05, okay? And then to enter in times 10 in the exponent, we're gonna use something called the E key. Now where the E is, is on these graphing calculators, it's right here above this comma, you see that EE -E right there. So what I wanna do is I wanna hit the second button, and then I'm gonna hit that button that has the EE -E above it, wherever yours might be on your calculator. And that tells the calculator times 10 to the, and then you just enter in your exponent of eight. Notice I did not use a times, I did not use the 10, I did not use a caret, none of that business. The reason why is because doing this tells the calculator that, hey, that term needs to stay all together, which on this problem is not that big of a deal, but let's say you were dividing by a scientific notation number, it would be a very big deal if that term wasn't kept together in the denominator. So something to keep in mind that this will always keep that term together for you. Now to enter in this, I just open up parentheses. I like to plug it in exactly how it looks. So I always put the parentheses, one second E negative six. And of course dividing by one doesn't do anything, but if it makes you feel better about life, then go ahead and enter that in. And then I just hit enter and I get my answer of 405. Now obviously you could report 405. Uh, let's also ask ourselves if we got correct sig figs here. Uh, this had one, two, three, and constants and conversions like this don't count, and so therefore I would want to show three sig figs, which 405 does have. So you could either report 405, or of course you could put that into scientific notation at 4.05, times 10 to the second. As far as my unit, the way we set this up, microliters and microliters cancel, leaving me with liters, which is what I was looking for. Now, Technically, this is also a great opportunity where you could do some mental math with this, okay? What happens is that when I have these times 10 numbers here, our exponents end up adding together. When I multiply things with exponents, the exponents add. And the 4.05 times one would just stay as 4.05. So if I had the 4.05 there, 10 to the eighth, and then 10 to the negative six, when those combine, leave me with an exponent of two. So very easy to do the mental math on these metric conversions. Um, some of your other kinds of conversions are a little bit trickier to do mental math with, but something like this would be pretty easy. All right, um, our other problem here says, what would 7.50 times 10 to the ninth millimoles be in kilomoles? So you notice here they're using moles as our metric kind of base. However, both of these have a prefix attached to it, milli and kilo. So between a prefix and a prefix, that is gonna take us two steps. Okay, so I'm looking for how many kilomoles, by the way, the abbreviation for moles is M-O-L. I know it seems really silly to like literally take off the E and call that an abbreviation, but that's what it is. Um, and I'm gonna be starting off with 7.50 times 10 to the ninth milla moles. All right, we already said this is going to take two steps, so I'm going to go ahead and draw in my two steps here. One, two, okay. And now I'm going to kind of start to decide where these units need to go. Um, millimole, I need to cancel, so I'm going to put that down here. And then you're like, but wait a minute, I can't skip straight to kilomole. 
Like, obviously, there's another step here. Well, the reason why is because anytime I'm going prefix to prefix, I don't have any of these conversions that go between prefix and prefix. So therefore, I want to take a side step through my base unit of mole. So on this step here, one goes with my prefix, milli. And milli has a scientific notation equivalent of 1 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, so that gets me to moles, but I want to go into kilomoles. So now we got millimoles to cancel top and bottom. Moles on top means I want to put moles on bottom to cancel. And I'm going to try and take this into kilomoles. Again, one goes with the prefix, but this time my prefix is on top. So I need one right here with the kilo. Okay, and then kilo has the equivalent of one times 10 to the positive third. Now, to kind of double check and make sure our conversions make sense, okay, one millimole, which is tiny, is a fraction of a big mole. Okay, that makes sense. And then a thousand moles are in one big kilomole. That also makes sense. So again, I'm asking myself, does, do those conversions make sense? Did I set them up correctly? Um, moles on top and moles on bottom cancel. So obviously, I will end up in my unit that I was looking for of kilomoles. Um, as far as plugging this in, Okay, um, again, I like to plug these in exactly how they look into my calculator. 7.50 second e to the 9. Then I have 1 second e negative third. If I want to do divided by 1, sure, go right ahead. Then I have 1 over, which I do need to do 1 over, the 1 second e to the third. And I see that gives me this lovely number right here. Now, here's where it gets kind of interesting. Of course, constants and conversions don't count for sig fig determination, okay? But over here, this has one, two, three sig figs, okay? Decimals present, so I count from this direction. Well, if I try and just show 750 for my sig figs, that is only three sig figs, but it's also losing the fact that it was 7,000 instead of 750, so that doesn't work. Also, I can't just put a decimal point on this because now that would be four sig figs. So this is a great opportunity to put it into scientific notation to get my sig figs exactly how I want them. Now, I will show you this. If you don't want to figure this out, scientific notation on your own, you know, if you go to mode, hit psi, or arrow over to psi and hit enter, and then we quit out of this. If I hit enter again, you can see it'll put it into scientific notation for you. However, be careful. Now that's only two sig figs. So if I want to show three, I should be showing 7.50, just like I had originally, times 10 to the third. And that would be in kilomoles. By the way, one other thing on this one, before I move the page, um, if you notice here, I had 10 to the ninth with 10 to the negative third. So that would bring me down to... 10 to the sixth, okay? But then when I divide by an exponent, I subtract that exponent. Dividing by 10 to the third is the same thing as multiplying by 10 to the negative third. So you can see nine minus three minus three ends up giving me three. So again, great opportunity to do some mental math there. Um, I will tell you this, uh, you sometimes have to do some metric conversions within the multiple choice part. And the multiple choice part of the AP test, you don't get a calculator on. So you could obviously set up metric conversions like that, or you can go the sneaky route and move over your decimal point. Uh, the most common conversions we do, I know I gave you that list up there of all those, but really I would say kilo, base, and milli, like going between those three are the most common ones that we see. And so if you remember going between kilo and the base and going to milli, like that's always moving you know, the decimal point three places and then three places again, and you can make those conversions a lot easier. So just be careful though with what direction you're moving your decimal point in. For example here, I have 0 0.0300 kiloliters, okay? And I wanna get it into liters. Well, I have this small number of big things and these are smaller things, so I should have a bigger number of these smaller liters than I have of the kiloliters. Um, so I know that I need to move my decimal to the right in order to get this number bigger. Between kiloliters and liters, there's a difference of 10 to the third, and so I need to move that decimal over one, two, three places. Now when I do that, I don't want to just report 30 because this number had three sig figs, so I'm going to come over here and report 30.0 to maintain the three significant figures that I had. 
Same thing goes between liters and milliliters. Liters is big, milliliters are small, so I should have more milliliters than I had liters. There should be more little things versus less big things. So I know again, I should be moving this decimal to the right. I also know that between liters and milliliters, that has that scientific notation exponent of negative three. So I should be moving the decimal over three places. Okay, so one, two, three. So if I just put 550 again, that only gives me two sig figs. So to give it that third sig fig, I would go ahead and put a decimal in there. And then last but not least here, I have lots of little milliliters. So I want less big liters. And so what I'm going to do on this one is actually move the decimal point the opposite direction. I'm going to move it back to the left. Again, three places because between milli and the base has that exponent of negative three. Um, here, that original number had decimal absent, one, two, three, six figs so I'm just going to report 8.75 liters so sometimes you can just move your decimal point and get your metric conversion and that's a lot easier than actually having to set up the dimensional analysis steps all right hope this was a good refresher hopefully you remember some of this metric stuff now that you're hearing it again um, if you have any questions please feel free to email me bye guys